we've decided the Bible is the Word of God. We don't have to have a general assembly about what we believe. It's written in the Bible. All right? So we don't have to debate about what we should think about homosexual activity. It's written in the Bible. Meet Ted Haggard, American evangelical pastor, founder of the Association of Life-Giving Churches, and an outspoken defender of traditional family values. How ironic it is, then, that in 2006, Pastor Ted should happen to involve himself in a high-profile sex scandal involving methamphetamine abuse and male prostitution. Now meet Mark Foley, former representative for the state of Florida, proud Roman Catholic, and vehement opponent against homosexual rights. How ironic, again, that this gentleman should be forced to resign from Congress after getting caught up in a scandal over sexual advances towards underage male congressional pages. Now meet Larry Wide Stance Craig, congressman, Methodist, and yet another political activist against gay rights. How ironic again that this guy should happen to find himself pleading guilty to charges of lewd conduct after allegedly soliciting sex from an undercover police officer in an airport men's room. You know, at times like this, I'm reminded of an old saying. If it happens once, it's an anomaly. If it happens twice, it's a coincidence. But if it happens three times, then it's a pattern. So why is it that outspoken opponents of gay rights seem to keep getting caught in these intense gay scandals? Does science have any insight on this issue? Is there perhaps a link between homophobia and latent homosexuality? Consider the following experiment. Go and round up a group of heterosexual males between the ages of 18 and 31 and measure their scores on the index of homophobia scale. It's nothing complicated, really. The index is simply a numeric value determined by responses to a 25-part questionnaire. For example, on a scale of 1 to 5, how much do you agree with the statement, I would feel comfortable working closely with a male homosexual? Or perhaps, I would feel disappointed if I learned that my child was homosexual. Stuff like that. When finished, divide your subjects into two groups. Take all of your subjects with index scores above 50 and classify them as homophobic. Likewise, for all those who scored below 50, classify them as non-homophobic. Now comes the fun part. Take each subject and place them in a cozy, soft recliner in a private, soundproof room. Once the subject is settled in, present him with a four-minute display of the juiciest, sexiest, guy-on-girl pornography that you can get your dirty little hands on. Then, as the subject sits back, relaxes, and enjoys the show, measure his penile enlargement over the course of the video. Now, I know what some of you might be wondering. How on earth could anyone possibly measure penile enlargement? Well, that's a perfectly good question. After all, it's not like some technician is going to sit there with a ruler while the subject gets his rocks off. Well, as it turns out, the answer is actually quite simple. All you need is a mercury in rubber circumferential strain gauge, also known as a penile plethysmograph, or as I like to call it, the boner meter. Yes, medical science really does have instruments for this sort of thing. Although it kind of makes you wonder what the conversation must have been like where the researchers tried to convince the subjects to actually put this thing on. Once you've finished sampling erectile data from your trusty boner meter, ask yourself, does a little homophobia have any effect on a man's enjoyment of wholesome guy-on-girl action? Surely not, right? Well, if that's what you're thinking, then you're absolutely correct. As the graph clearly shows, the difference in penile diameter between each group was essentially negligible. Homophobes and non-homophobes appear to enjoy classic porn equally well. Who'd have thunk? Now let's shake things up a bit. After finishing his first round of scientific porn viewing, give your subject a few minutes to cool off and get ready for round two. This time, present him with yet another four-minute clip of sweet, delicious porn. Except now, instead of showing him ordinary heterosexual sex, show him the best lesbian sex that adult entertainment has to offer. Once again, be sure to make good use of that good old boner meter and take regular measurements of your subject's penile erections. Now let's ask ourselves again, does homophobia have any effect on a man's enjoyment of homosexual girl-on-girl -girl action? Surely it would, right? Well, actually, no. As far as physical erections are concerned, homophobic males appear to enjoy girl-on-girl -girl sex just as much as any other male. So no real difference here either. Now, let's shake things up one last time. With round two out of the way, give your subjects another brief cool-down period to prepare for round three. 
Only this time, show them a four-minute clip of homosexual guy-on-guy pornography. Surely, homophobic men, men who literally feel uncomfortable in the physical presence of other gay men, will not manifest any arousal to such stimulus, right? Wrong. As the results clearly show, homophobic men tend to exhibit more than twice the erectile diameters of non-homophobic men while viewing male-on-male pornography. This result has even been replicated many times over throughout the scientific literature. The more outspoken a man is against homosexuals, the more likely it is that he himself harbors latent homosexual arousals. This is a phenomenon which I like to call Ted Haggard syndrome. The more his lips say no, the more likely his loins will say yes. So the next time you see another one of those creepy religious guys railing against the evils of same-sex marriage, ask yourself, what could possibly motivate this individual to take such a hard stance on such a minor cultural issue? In a world plagued by scarcity, corruption, hunger, poverty, greed, ignorance, and the grim specter of nuclear annihilation, is gay marriage really such a terrible threat to the future of humanity? Or could it just be that these men are psychologically reacting against a perceived threat to their own identities? So don't embrace the way God made you. Here's what you should do. Choose to be a hetero and seven foot two because Ted Haggard is completely heterosexual. Ted Haggard is completely heterosexual. Ted Haggard is completely heterosexual. Glory how we blew ya.